I'm here with his beatitude, Bishop William Shomali, here in Jerusalem. Now, you're the Bishop of Jerusalem. Which other areas do you look after? My jurisdiction is to help the Latin Patriarch in Jerusalem, West Bank, which includes also Gaza, while there are two other auxiliary bishops, one for Jordan and one for Israel. And uh, is the Catholic Church making a difference here in Palestine? Uh, we try to make difference, especially in three fields, the education, health, and social. In the education we have, in all the Holy Land, Jordan, Palestine, Israel, 100 Catholic schools with 63,000 students. All these uh, students uh, study, they are Christian and Muslim, and they study together. So we are really uh, concerned about their growing up in a very good environment of dialogue and mutual collaboration. If they know how to study together, to live together during that, how to work together during real life. So, so we try also to give not only education, but excellence, excellent education. And in fact, the private schools in Palestine are the best. Uh, second field of action in the Holy Land is health. In all the Holy Land, we have, and Jordan, we have 12 Catholic hospitals. Uh, some of them are specialized, like uh, St. Louis Hospital in Jerusalem. It's for cancer and for uh, desperate cases. We have uh, some hospitals in Bethlehem, like Caritas Baby Hospital for children like Arab society, which is under the jurisdiction of the Latin Patriarchate, it's for, uh, it's a uh, general hospital, but also with specialization for handicapped and bones. Uh, so we are very concerned with health problems in the West Bank. Then we work in the social uh, sector, where there is need, we try to fill the need. Uh, we take care of a humanitarian help, medical help to those who are poor. We are finishing these months a huge housing project in Jerusalem for 80 ap uh, families, 80 apartments. A project that we started years ago, getting the permits, then uh, fundraising, then contacting banks, uh, I believe that this project, uh, which lasted long, but it's a real miracle of the providence and of the nice collaboration between Latin Patriarchate and the beneficiaries who uh, really were uh, showed responsibility since the beginning. So this is the, these are the sectors where the Latin Patriarchate and the Catholic Church in the Holy Land makes difference in education, health sector, and social. This is besides our spiritual work to give, this is besides our spiritual work to, to uh, deepen the faith of our people, to give, them, to give them spirituality, better knowledge of the Word of God, of the Bible, because this is the most, need, uh, the most needest, needed element. Uh, and th for this the church is, to give spirituality, to give faith in God, to give ethics, to give values, then the other things are complementary. So really you're being salt and light within Palestine and uh, showing the love of Christ through the action works that you're doing. We try to be light and salt. I don't uh, claim that we succeed all the time, but this is our duty to be a bridge to be salt, to be light. And in which cities do you have the largest amount of Palestinian Christians? The area of Bethlehem is, has the highest percentage of Christians in the West Bank. Uh, the official statistics go between 23,000 to 26,000 living actually in Bethlehem. We don't mention those who have still the Palestinian ID or Palestinian passport and who live in Jordan or elsewhere. So this is the biggest number in a Bethlehem area. Follows uh, uh, Jerusalem with 10,000. Ramallah area with uh, 
the same number or a little bit more. We have a tiny community in Gaza where we have also three Catholic schools. And we have also a tiny community in, in Jenin and around Jenin. Now you say you have a, a community in Gaza. Is it easy actually to get into Gaza or is that very, very difficult? Everyone knows that to go in Gaza and out from Gaza is much more difficult than to go to Bethlehem or out of Bethlehem. You know this. So it's not really easy. Not really easy. Not, neither for us. We need coordination as clergy to go to Gaza. Neither to the population itself, which suffers from lack of circulation and free movement. Now, do you work with uh, Muslims as well as Christians? Yes, uh, we do that and we are happy to do that. It's part of our mission and work. We are one people. We have one language in common, one history. We suffer together from the political situation and insecurity. So for us, working with Muslims is natural. We are citizens of the same country. We have the same duties and uh, rights and responsibilities. We do this especially in schools where the teachers are both Christians and Muslims, where students are the same, uh, Christians and Muslims. We work through Bethlehem University, where most of the students are Muslim. The teachers, lecturers are both Christian and Muslims. We try also to have very good relationship with the religious authority. So we exchange uh, wishes for our feast, their feasts. And when there is any uh, national issue, we try to be together. Uh, so for us, it's crucial really to keep good relationship with our brother Muslims. And we feel also that Muslims also are concerned with our welfare and remaining in the Holy Land. We heard this from President Abbas, from Pres uh, Prime Minister, from the Mufti, that they are concerned of the permanence of the Christian community in the Holy Land. The Holy Land shouldn't be emptied from its Christian community. And they continue to say that we are original citizens here, not imported. So we are native here. We, are, we were here since centuries. So our presence here is so important for the Palestinian identity. Now it is Easter time. Do you have a special message for the Palestinian Christians in the land? Yes. Easter means reconciliation. Uh, it's true that Easter, above all, is the resurrection of Christ who passed from death to life on the third day. But Jesus passed from death to life in order that we, like him, by the power of his resurrection, we can pass, make a transition from death to life. But in the spiritual meaning, death is sin, life is love of God. Uh, so this reconciliation of God is an important element for our Christian spirituality about Easter. But reconciliation with God cannot be performed without a reconciliation with our neighbor. So I can summarize the message of Easter. It's a message of life, reconciliation, first of all with God, then with our neighbors, without distinction. Whoever he is, we should be in good terms with him. We should love him, forgive him, this is the message of Easter. Now, the Palestinian community struggles very much at the moment. Is there a sense of hope there within the, the message of Easter? Hope. You know, um, humanly speaking, we don't find a solution to the Israeli-Palestinian issue. On the contrary, every year it becomes more intricate, more complicated, and less easy to solve because of the number of new settlements, because of the impact of the wall on the life of Palestinians, because of the hatred which now exists between both peoples. So we don't really see and foresee a short-term uh, solution for the Israeli-Palestinian problem. But 
uh, we as believers, we trust in the Lord. One, everything is humanly closed. One, all the roads uh, have no exit. Uh, here we have to invoke the Lord, who is the Lord of the impossible, and who can, who can give us what we cannot obtain by our own efforts. I give an example just uh, to smile. Uh, if, I, uh, if I have a toothache, I go to the dentist. I don't, I don't go to pray because the Lord tells me you can deal with that without my help if I want a coffee I don't go to the Lord I make my coffee alone but to make peace it was proven that politicians were not able to perform to obtain peace we know why as Palestinians we know very well who doesn't want peace this is the reason we recur to the Lord because we have faith that he is the strongest and he can surprise us. When everything is clo all the doors are closed, the, 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 the Lord asks us to knock at his door. And if he asks us to knock at his door, and he said, pray for the peace of Jerusalem, the Psalm 121. So if he asks us to recur to him and to knock at his door, it means that he has the key to open. So if there is no peace, maybe we didn't pray enough for peace. This is my... Uh, uh, conviction that we all Christians and Muslims and Jews we have to pray sincerely uh, for peace and we will obtain us as a surprising gift of the Lord and already we had in Jerusalem the strongest surprise in the history of the world someone died and on the third day he rose up from the death while no one was expecting it even the closest friends of him so for because Easter happened, because the resurrection happened, we continue to hope that other surprises can happen with the power of the same Lord. So how will you be celebrating Easter this year? We will be celebrating Easter uh, during the Holy Week in the Holy Sepulchre, starting from Su Palm Sunday tomorrow and uh, ending by Easter celebration Mass in the Holy Sepulchre. We will go often, more than seven, eight times, to the Holy Sepulchre for the different days. Holy Thursday, Good Friday, Holy Saturday, and uh, uh, Easter Sunday. So Easter Sunday will be, will be the most joyful celebration of the year. We will go with the scouts, with the consuls of uh, Italy, France, Spain, and uh, uh, Belgium, and many other guests. We have... Uh, uh, two hours mass, a procession around the Holy Sepulchre itself. Then we come in a solemn procession from the Holy Sepulchre with the scouts, this time also music, tambours, to the Latin Patriarchate. So we consider Easter is the most beautiful day in the year. Could you share with us something about the, the sufferings of Christ, what it means personally to you? Yes. The suffering of Christ means how nasty and heartless can be human beings towards an innocent man. Jesus was sinless, innocent. He has done only good to people. He healed them. He rose three of them from the dead. He was preaching the good news of salvation. Uh, the high priests, the Pharisees, the scribes were jealous because he won the hearts of the people while they were losing the hearts of the people. Uh, so for me, the suffering of Jesus show us the depth of the uh, heartless feeling of human beings. But in the same time, uh, Jesus offered his suffering to the Lord and he offered his obedience to the Father and this suffering became a source of blessing and salvation for all the world. So we were saved through Christ's suffering and Christ's crucifixion because himself was innocent. So the suffering of an innocent has value in the eyes of the Lord. The Lord doesn't want suffering in itself. Suffering in itself is a bad thing. Someone should not 
cause sufferings to others. But if I am innocent and I suffer, but I try not to uh, to have hatred in my heart, and I try and I offer my suffering as a sacrifice to the Lord, it gains value and value of salvation and redemption. And uh, what's it like for you personally being a bishop here in Jerusalem where Jesus done most of his ministry or a lot of his ministry? I feel a lot of responsibility to teach faith, to raise faith in the people, more love, more reconciliation. It's a responsibility. I can't do it without the help of the Lord and the help of all the members of our community. And uh, finally, what's your prayer for uh, people in the land here at this time celebrating Easter? My prayer is, Lord, give us peace, but give us before peace justice. And the fruit of justice is peace, and the fruit of peace is reconciliation. So the Lord, give us these three gifts, justice, peace, and reconciliation. Uh, reconciliation between us and yourself but reconciliation us also on the social level between families and also a political reconciliation between the two peoples in struggle. But this reconciliation should be based on complete peace, integral peace, and full justice. Well, Bishop Shamali, thank you very much. Welcome.